In this video, you're going to learn how to make one of these really cute origami bag pouches. They're great for all sorts of things, particularly using as a cute little gift bag for somebody very special. I'm Christine of Christine's Crafts, and this channel is dedicated to crafting on a budget. So what are you going to need to make one of these? Very little. You're going to need something to make your drawstring out of. You can see I'm using a very small, fine ribbon. And you're going to need two different fabrics. Out of each fabric, you want to cut a square that is 12 inches by 12 inches, and that's to make the cute little bag I've got. So you're going to need your two squares. Obviously, you can make these bigger or smaller, but this is just for the one I've made. And you're going to need two buttons or beads to go on the end of your drawstring so that they don't pull through. Now, the bag I've made is about three inches high and about three and a half to four inches wide. So that's what you're going to make if you stick with my measurements. So the first thing you're going to do is to take your squares of fabric and you're going to place them right sides together. So make sure you've got the right sides of both pieces of fabric facing each other. Line up your squares and then either pin or clip all the way around the edge. You're just holding them together so that you can sew and nothing's going to move. Now, obviously, when you sew all the way around, you need to leave an opening for turning it out. And what I recommend is that you mark that opening now so that you don't go wrong. Now, I'm just going to use some larger clips because that will just alert me that I need to stop and leave a gap. You could do it with a little mark or with some pins. It's entirely up to you. But then you're just going to sew and leave that opening so it's over to the machine. So the first thing we're sewing, I'm going to show you on the machine carefully. You'll see I'm just going past those and I'm going to start at one side of the opening. I'm using half an inch seam allowance and use your set off. Now make sure you do a little bit of reversing to secure that seam. We don't want anything coming undone. And then keep going all the way to the corner. Now make sure you go the right distance so that you're ready to set off the other way. Make sure the needle's in, pick the foot up and turn the whole thing through 90 degrees. Now you'll see I put it back because I hadn't gone far enough. And then once you're happy you're lined up, you're setting off the other way. And keep going. So at each corner, make sure the needle's in, lift the foot and pivot. And keep working your way around until you come back to that marker you left for your opening. Now my opening is about three to four inches. Four inches is plenty. Three inches, you can have a little bit of a struggle turning it through. So somewhere around that size. And again, a little bit of a reverse at the end to secure your seam. Take it off the machine and back to your workspace. So before you think about turning it out, you want to clip those corners. Now, all this is doing is removing some bulk so you get a better corner. Make sure you go close to your stitches, but also make sure you don't cut your stitches. You don't want any holes, but it really is worth taking the time to do this. And then you're going to find that hole that you left and turn the whole lot through there so that it's right side out. So just force it all through, pull it, and then you want to get it out as flat as you can. So you'll probably find you need something like a chopstick, but something that's quite pointed, but not too pointed, because you don't want to burst through your seam to get those lovely corners. You can also rub your corners between your fingers. That sometimes helps them to come out and open properly. And then you'll have a nice, flat square. Now what you'll find is those corners don't want to sit as flat as you would like and your seams don't tend to sit as flat as you would like. So work your way around the square. You can see I'm rolling it open, pulling the seam to the edge and pressing it. And it really is a worthwhile step to get those nice crisp edges. So make sure you've got the seam right on the edge and give it a press. And then work your way around the whole square doing this. So you can see, take your time. It really is an activity that it's worth taking your time on. And you'll come to the side where you've got the opening. 
Now we're doing exactly the same thing, but what I recommend you do is press either side of the opening and then make sure your opening is lining up perfectly. You want a nice straight side and then press it just like the other edges, but just make sure you get that opening to lie flat. And then press the whole thing. And the next step is to sew your, fast, your opening closed using a ladder stitch or a slip stitch. And it's the one thing I forgot to show you. So I've put it up on the screen. Sew the hole before you do anything else. Sew up the hole. Then you're going to move on to the origami. So you're going to measure four inches from one corner. Doesn't matter which corner, unless you've got directional print and you're bothered. And then you're going to measure four inches from the same corner along the other side of your square. I'm just marking mine with pins and then they can come out very soon. And then once you've marked it, you're going to fold the point up and that can just pin in place. Now you'll notice the fabric that was face down is the one that you want to largely see on your bag when it's finished. So the fabric that's your main fabric, your feature fabric, should be face down while you're doing this first fold. So now go to the opposite corner and again mark four inches down either side, fold the point up and pin it in place. Now those marker pins can come out, we don't need them. So what we're going to do is sew that down making the casing for the drawstring. So I can't tell you where to sew because you need to make sure your casing is plenty wide enough for your ribbon. Now this one's a very fine ribbon so I'll probably do it half an inch. But I did use a ribbon on one of these that was 3 eighths of an inch and I made my casing a good 5 eighths of an inch. So once you've decided where to sew that casing, you're going over to the machine and you're going to sew each of those points down the right distance from the fold. So if you've only got a fine cord, you can probably do it half an inch. You might want to do it a little bit wider if you've got a wider ribbon. Just make sure you reverse at either end, hold these securely. Remember, this is where your drawstring is going to run through this little casing that you've made. It's not only holding that uh, triangle down. And then repeat for the other one. And you've just made your casings and the top of your bag. So now once they're sewn, turn it over and fold it in half so that those two edges completely match. So you can see, just adjust, get everything matching and lined up, and then just pop a little pin through to hold it all in place. And we now want to mark the side seams of the bag. So you're going to get a ruler and you're going to draw a straight line down from the top to the bottom. Now what I do is I just mark where that straight line will come to, and then I measure the distance from the point to my mark, and from the point to my mark on the other side. And I can just make sure they look about right. If they were a lot different, I'd redo my marks. If you're happy with it, draw those straight lines in. Now I'm just using an ordinary uh, biro. You could use a fabric marker or a pencil, but because I'm going to sew down it and no one will ever see it, I'm happy just to use a pen. So once you've marked them, over to the machine and sew those seams down there to form the sides of your bag. Remember to reverse at either end as you normally would. Then once they're sewn, you're going to bring it back to your workspace. You're going to fold the point in from one side and then open it back up as I'm doing here to form that square and then fold the point down and you'll see that you're now forming the pocket that's going to form the side pocket on your little bag. Now secure that front edge just with a little pin and making sure you don't go right through your bag. Turn the whole thing over and secure the other point at the back. Again, make sure you don't go through the whole bag. At no point do we want to close this bag up. We want it to work as a bag at the end. And then once you're happy, we're going to repeat that on the other side. So you're going to fold that point across. So you're folding down the seam and then 
open it up to form the square and then fold your point down. So just take your time and get it all lined up and tidy. And then you can pin that down at the front. And then wrap it around the back and pin it at the back. And if any of these aren't sitting flat or aren't lined up properly or you're not happy with them, just undo them and repin them until it's all sitting nicely. Just take your time on that because that's really going to affect your finished product. So make sure you're happy with them and that it's all sitting nicely. And then check that you've still got a bag. We don't want to have sewn it shut. And then it's time to secure those down. And you're going to do that by hand. Okay, a little bit of hand stitching. So get yourself your needle threaded up and a little knot in the end of your thread. And we're going to hide the stitches. So we're going to sew it invisibly. So you want to put your needle right underneath that point so you can get rid of that knot underneath. And just take a little bit of the point. And then you want a little bit of the bag. And you'll see I've got my hand in the bag, so I can't sew all the way through it. And you're just repeatedly going to take a little stitch from the point and a little stitch from the bag. And you'll see that I just do a little bit up one side and then a little bit on the end and then a little bit down the other side of the point. And this just holds it nice and securely, but without sewing the whole thing down. So it's still got a bit of life to it, a little bit of movement. And then once you're happy with it, make sure you do a couple of knotting stitches where you do your stitch and then you put your needle through the loop before you pull it tight. Make sure you do a couple of those to hold it secure. And then once you're happy with it, cut your thread off and then you're off to do another one. So you need to do that with all four points so that they're all secure and all those pins are out. And you must be able to see now that your bag's really starting to appear. So just make sure all four are secure. And then we should have a little bag and the little pockets on the side are there. So all we need to do now is give it a boxed bottom and give it a drawstring. So turn your bag inside out. And then where you've got those loose points in the bottom, you need to pull those back up because you do not want to catch them in the box bottom unless you do. If you want to put yours in, you can do. But if you want one like mine, you need those little points to be pulled up. So just pull them up so that you can see they're up and out of the way and then get a good point in the bottom of your bag. You want that point to be nice and crisp. And then throughout this, you'll see me keep checking my points are still up so that I don't catch them in. That is experience speaking. I have caught the points in accidentally before. So once you're happy they're up, we're going to flatten the bag the other way so that those points at the bottom of the bag match up. So you see what I did? I made sure the points were up and then I flattened the bag to get those points on the bottom of the bag together. You can see they're still there can't possibly catch them in and line these up. Just take a little bit of time. Sometimes it doesn't want to go the way you want it to. And then we're going to make that box bottom. So take a ruler and measure from that point. And you're going to measure one inch. Just measure down from the point and then draw a horizontal line. That's where you're going to sew to make that boxy bottom. And then turn the whole thing over and do the same thing again. And then it's over to the machine to sew those seams. Because we're going to sew the two points separately. We're not sewing the whole lot together. So each folded point that you've got down there, take it to the machine and sew it. Do your little bit of reversing. Sew along your line, a little bit of reversing at the end.
and then repeat that for the other point. So remember, these two points, you do them separately so that they form the box at either side of the bag. And then once you've done those, it's time to turn your bag the right way out. So poke it all back through. And you should now have a little bag that stands up because it's got a little box to bottom. And that's actually a technique that you can use on other things that you make as well. So now we've really got this bag coming together. It must be time to give it a drawstring. So you've got your ribbon or your cord and you're going to feed it through. Now the best way is to thread it through a needle if it's small and thread the needle through. Or if you've got wide ribbon, it's worth putting a safety pin on the end and feeding the safety pin through. So just start at one end, go through, you pop out and then back in the other way because you want your ribbon to come back out the way it went in. Now, how long you want your ribbons is up to you, but I used a reasonable length on this. I used 36 inches of ribbon and then cut it down a little bit just to make it tidy. I like the button to just touch the ground when the bag's wide open, but that's a personal preference. You can make them as long or as short as you like. So once you've put one drawstring through, you want to put the other one through from the opposite end. So just go to the other side of your bag and feed your needle or your safety pin through. And you see, once you've got something sizable, it's quite easy. But to just try and push a ribbon through is very difficult. And then back in the other side. So your stop and checkpoint here would definitely be, have I got two ends? out of either side of the bag so that when I pull them it will pull this bag up and close it at the top. Once you're happy with that we just need to make sure those drawstrings can't disappear. We don't ever want them disappearing inside the bag and coming undone. So you need to feed your ribbon through your buttons or your beads. Now, obviously with buttons, you're gonna need a fine ribbon that you can thread onto a needle that fits through the holes in your buttons. So you need to think a little bit about this when you're choosing your button or your bead to make sure you can get your ribbon through. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm threading it on a needle and I'm feeding it through one of the holes in the button and then I'm feeding the other one through a different hole in the button. And then I can knot them together and they'll be nice and secure. If you've got a large bead and you're putting your ribbons through, you're going to have to make sure you get a nice big knot on the end so that they can't pull back through the bead. But it really is down to whatever you've used for your drawstring. So you make sure you position your button now where you want it. And your strings are the length you want them. And then do the knot at that position. And as you can see, I've quite a bit of ribbon left over. I'm just going to trim it up. Now you can trim them up however you like as well. Do you want them at an angle? Do you want a little fork on the end? It's up to you. So once you're happy, you're going to repeat that process for the other end. And then you will have a drawstring bag, an origami drawstring bag. But we're not finished yet because you'll notice it doesn't quite look like mine looked at the start of this video but you have got a functioning bag. Now it's time to get creative and decorate it however you like. So if you want to do like mine, um, I sewed yo-yos on, these little yo-yo flowers. And there's a link on your screen now to a video showing you how to make your own little yo-yo flowers. And then you simply sew them on wherever you want them. Now I've chosen to keep it simple and put one on the front and one on the back. But simply sew it to the bag, again, making sure you don't go through the bag. Another great idea for decorating these is buttons. You could even cover some buttons and have matching buttons on, or you could have contrasting buttons, but they do make a great decoration. So you'll see I'm just securing it, and then I'll fasten off, and it's all secure.
very quick, very easy, a little bit of hand sewing. On the other side of mine, I've also put a button on the front of the yo-yo just to make it a little bit more interesting. So that's it. Your bag is complete. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Lots of great ideas on the channel, so please join me again. Thanks for watching.